Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous video we saw that it takes roughly 70 milliseconds for a signal to travel from the, the SV down to the receiver. But we want to know the exact time. So how do we do that? What's the design to come up with the exact time that it took for, and of course we need to adjust that for all the other potential errors on the clock, but we want to calculate the exact delta time between when it left the SV and when it arrived at the receiver. So the way that's done is we use the CA code. Now the CA code looks something like this. It's a string of ones and zeros. And when the SV sends it, we have a specific moment in time when the signal is transmitted down to the receiver. Of course, it's always being transmitted, but we pick a point in time. And then notice we get ones and zeros. By the time it arrives at the receiver, and of course I probably should write this here, arrives at the receiver, of course everything will have shifted in time. Notice that this one is now over here, this zero is now over here, and so forth. And so this would be another part of the bit string from the CA code. Now, what we do is we multiply the two bit strings together. Whenever we have a 0 times a 1, we end up with a 0. Of course, 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. Whenever we have a 1 times a 1, we end up with a 1. Since they are not matched up, notice that the total number that we then match up with this string over here down below, we only get a number of 3 bits where they match. Now we of course know that this is a time difference. We wouldn't know that at the time, but we can visually see there's a certain amount of time difference here. So what we then do is we begin to shift the bit string that has been received uh, at the receiver. We then begin to shift that. Now how do we know that we're dealing with a particular bit string from a particular satellite? Well, it turns out that every satellite sends out its own unique CA code and each receiver can duplicate the CA code for every one of the receivers up in the sky. So we first need to make sure that we match up the bit code from, that we receive from the receiver to which receiver it is. Once we've done that, then we begin to shift the bit code on the receiver until they match up perfectly. Well, how do we, they match up perfectly? Well, we just shift it over one bit we make the multiplication again, we shift over another bit, we do the calculation, we shift over another bit, we do the calculation, and each time we see what the total number of aligned one bits are. And then of course, when we have a perfect alignment like this, notice then we're going to have a much bigger number. In this case of the short little sequence here, notice there's 1,023 bits in the chain. But here in that small little example, we end up with the number six, which is the largest number you'll get with any sort of shift. Then you know, I've shifted it correctly, you count the number of bits that you shifted, and now you know the time differential. Now, it turns out that the frequency of this signal is a, is a million or 1.023 megahertz. It's 1,023 bits repeated 1,000 times per second, which means that each string of bits roughly represents one millisecond, and we already knew that there's about a 70 millisecond time delay between the signal being sent and the signal being received. So how do you know that you've lined this up correctly? Well, that means we first need to do a very rough calculation of the position of the satellite relative to the receiver. And usually we can do that within a few hundred kilometers. That can be done very, very quickly using the Almanac. The Almanac data tells us whereabouts each satellite will be at any moment in the day. So we know about where the satellite is going to be roughly to within 200 kilometers. That means that we're now um, lined up in a window of about three-tenths of a millisecond. And then once we know that alignment, we know about approximately what the time difference should be, then we begin to shift to come up with the other few tenths of a millisecond in order to get that exact alignment, giving us the exact time between when the satellite uh, when the SV sends the signal and when the receiver receives the signal. So first we need to do a rough range calculation using the almanac for that particular satellite. That gives us close enough to get within a few tenths of, uh, of a millisecond. Then we do get the rest of the alignment by moving the bit string over on the, in the receiver to match up with the bit string that received from the satellite. Once that's done, we get that final 
result, and I notice we're now as accurate as one one thousand of a millisecond in time duration, which will give us about one millionth of a second or one microsecond. So that gives us the first coarse measurement called the CA measurement by using the CA bit string. Of course, one millisecond isn't near enough because that still puts us off by as much as a thousand feet. We want to get much more accurate than that, but that's done through later algorithms and we'll show you how that is done in the future. But at least this will get us on a range to within a thousand feet, about 300 meters from the satellite, which is pretty good. That's a good start and then we want to lock into a closer distance and we'll show how that's done. So stay tuned.